Well, my name is Jim Wysela, and I um, have a little company called Duff Media Partners, do communications consulting. I'm also a working journalist in Chicago, and long-time affiliation with uh, Reagan Communications and Reagan Consulting. Uh, brand journalism, to me, is a kind of an exciting trend because it combines uh, the, the idea of good storytelling uh, and good journalism with the idea that you know, we really, an organization can showcase its, its own expertise without having to sell it, instead show it. I think if you're going to embark on brand journalism, you have to realize that it's more than just about changing the way you write stories or moving from press releases to, you know, good actual journalistic storytelling. It's really kind of a cultural shift in the organization. It's really about changing the whole mindset around your own content. We're not going out there, you know, begging for people to do our stories. We're doing the stories and we're putting it out there and inviting everyone else in, whether that's news media, our own employees, or um, you know, members of our broader community, whether that, that's our customers or, our, or, or the community at large. The big idea that I push a lot on these projects is to make that connection very early on between the business that you're in, let's say it's hospitals, what the business goals are, and what you're doing with the brand journalism and to make sure that those are connected. Because you have to make the business case for spending the time and the money and the people to do this kind of uh, communication, this kind of journalism. And so we always start by going back and saying, well, what are you trying to achieve? Well, we're trying to brand ourselves better. We're trying to bring more customers in the door. You know, we're trying to get more people to come to our clinics. Uh, we're trying to expand our media reach or, or improve our reputation. And we try to make it very clear that we're, we're building a site uh, out, out of which you know, the stories we do will feed themselves indirectly into those goals. I'm Carl Ostreich, manager of media relations at Mayo Clinic here at the Social Media Summit to talk about brand journalism sites and looking at kind of lessons learned in building our own Mail Clinic News Network here at Mail Clinic. And I'm Ron Petrovich, manager for the Center for Social Media, and we talked about brand journalism and how it's an opportunity to relay multimedia content and make it accurate and tell your story as proactively as possible from a media standpoint. It helps the media understand what, uh, what your information is all about because if you can provide the elements that are con customizable, that helps everyone. It, uh, the media these days have uh, less resources to do more, and as long as they have editorial freedom, there's an opportunity for everyone, and you just need to make it simple the way you deliver that information to them. It changes the way people work. If you have media relations professionals whose main charge is to develop relationships with reporters and uh, build those relationships so that you can um, pitch better stories, you'll get the question, geez, why should I be feeding this brand journalism site when I should be cultivating relationships with reporters? I think what we've found is that once we get the buy-in that this gives you more resources to do your pitching, it makes you more valuable as a media relations professional, um, it goes a long way, but it's not an easy road. It, it's constant kind of talking about it face-to-face, one-on-one, small group, it's really kind of selling the concept and selling the benefits to your staff members so that they understand why they should be doing this and why they should be changing the way they do their work. It helps to have a colleague like Carl Ostreich working with you on a project like this because it was very calm and very goal oriented and there were a lot of times where, you know, Carl even mentioned in our presentation today where it might have been a Friday afternoon, we said, you know what, let's talk about this on Monday because there were a lot of internal clashes and philosophical differences and we had to continue to stress, here's where we're going, celebrate the victories, take small steps, and eventually we're gonna, we're gonna find our way. And it's, um, we're, we're getting there, it's still taking a lot of time, we're trying to organize our content and relations and process and procedures among the teams, but you need a commitment with managers and leadership and you know, most importantly, with your colleagues who are going to be out executing it. And 
it's, uh, it's been a challenge, but we're, uh, we're starting to have some success, and when you can sell those success stories, then everyone is starting to see that, okay, this is gonna work. And you can't, you can't underestimate that commitment between two managers. Uh, Ron and I are committed to working together and figuring this out, and I think um, after a while that was um, pointed out by a number of our team members that, hey, Ron and Carl seem to get along, seem to wanna make this happen. And I think once they saw that, that, hey, we know that this isn't perfect right now, the technical platform's not working the way we want it to, but our goal is to get a more stable platform. Now we're in a place a year, a year ago where, boy, I mean, if you would have said, we're not gonna have the site go down three or four times a week, I'd say, well, that'll be great. Well, now we have a platform that works and is very stable and that the media people are very, um, very versed in it and are, willing to talk to journalists about registering for the news network to get content where a year ago they were very reserved about well geez i don't have faith in the platform so i'm not going to i'm not going to help feed the platform i'm not going to help sell the platform and i think we've come 180 degrees in in less than a year and but i think it was a commitment from ron and his team to say hey we'll start continue to work on the technical aspect of it to make it better and it has gotten better yeah, that, that's the thing that th there were so many challenges and, and hurdles that it, it's the way you approach the success and, and the failures that, you know, we, we knew from the outset there were going to be lessons learned, uh, a.k.a. failures. And it was the approach to just understanding that that was just going to be a part of the process. You couldn't dismiss it. You had to deal with it directly, but also with an understanding that you're going to try to fix these things on a daily, regular basis. but things don't always work that quickly. So you have to have that patience and commitment to keep pushing that rock up the hill. Uh, we talk a lot about the fact that, you know, I don't know, 85 to 95 percent of what we do can be pre-planned and ready to go, whether it's a scientific study that's being published in a, in a medical journal or research that's being uh, presented at a conference. You know, those are things that are around embargo dates that we can plan for. But there are things that if we're better at planning on the front end and getting that on the docket, on the calendar, you know, even a month or two in advance, when we do have breaking news items where we want to insert our experts into news of the day items, like a flu vaccine shortage or a government shutdown, we're ready to go and we can be very flexible and nimble and make that happen within a matter of hours and not be, you know, taking two or three days to make it happen. One of the things that, that we've succeeded in, and not with everyone, but we've had a few leaders and, and examples, is the, the use of different platforms of media. And you know, when we started, a part of our presentation was tearing down silos, where it was media relations with Carl's team or internal communications, and we were the social media team. We are now integrating into our workflow that media relations and social media, it's all part of the same process. Um, information might go out on television, it might go out on radio, it might go to newspaper, it would be on Google+, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, it's going to go everywhere. And when you can start to show that people are reacting outside of Mayo Clinic and commenting and engaging in this conversation beyond just the walls of a singular um, distribution system, that's helping us help everyone else understand that this is now part of the new workflow because we were asked I don't know, probably by three or four people today, how do you take time to do these kind of things? I, my, already, I'm so overloaded, I can't do this. Somehow you have to figure that, a way to put that into your workflow on a daily basis. Yeah, and I think just starting out simple, don't look at it as being climbing Mount Everest and you're never gonna make it. You need to celebrate those small accomplishments and say, geez, I can go out and get a WordPress account now, that's free, I can start a blog. Start as a blog platform. That's essentially what our news network is built on as an enhanced WordPress blog platform. So you, you can go out there and easily move down that path, move slowly, get comfortable with the technology and build from there. But don't do the all or nothing approach. Celebrate the small, the small wins and um, you know, make small goals along the way with the kind of ultimate goal a year from now, two years from now, where you want to be, but make sure to, to kind of look at those small milestones and really take the time and say, hey, we've come a long ways.